Good. Uh, what is? Yep. It's still the morning, Mike. Good to see you. It looks like you're in the legal offices of Bingham and Ingham. So let's. Uh, I think today's session. Let's talk about rules. Um, what do you say? Yeah, and I think a little of the rules discussion is you know somewhat lawyerly like, but mostly you know you got to know what the basics of it, but then how do you use it tactically and everything else? We're not we're not being C lawyers here, but we are. You have to know the basics of that rule to be effective. All right. So the, the big thing that we see a lot is the uh, let's go take it to the weather mark, or at least let's talk about the mark rules and the poor tack approach, which, um, you know, is, is often abused. And it is, as you might say, the most impactful rule for, for other boats. And uh, you want to take us through that scenario? Yeah. So I think that, you know, you, I, when, before we started this, you asked me what I thought the, the most violated rule in the rule book was. And, you know, maybe there's you know, a few little things that aren't so impactful, but if you kind of combine impactful and, and frequent, you know, it, it'll happen. If you sail a regatta, a lot of boats, it's going to affect you at that weather mark, you know, at some point in the regatta. And, um, and I think the, the thing about that weather mark and when somebody's coming in on port and violates what they can't do in there, they don't have rights and they take it anyway. It, it could be like regatta changing for you, you know, Think of that somebody tacks in there, or you have to avoid them by going low, and now you can't make the mark, and now you have to jibe around. Now you're the port tack boat. And if it's a big regatta and there's a starboard parade, you, you, know, you could lose 30 boats, you know, if it's huge regatta. So it, it could be massively impactful. And that's why I think it's um, so frustrating when people don't take the high road on this one. Yeah. And I, and I think that, you know, over, over recent times, right, people have tried to deal with this race, race committees by even having. Uh, you know, the offset uh, mark there, or the, not the offset, but um, the keep away buoy, right? To, to sort of shut down that, that late port entry, but even still, you know, it still happens. Yeah. And, and you know, that, that's an interesting thing where you put another mark to lure to the weather mark and you can't go inside that. It's a really fun way to potentially mitigate that. And mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of like almost gets rid of the need for an offset because it moves that port ley line away too. So it's kind of a clever way to solve the problem. But the fact that people had to do that sort of highlights that it's a really big problem and um, worth addressing. And, you know, I think the other thing that people don't, some people don't understand is that, you know, the, inst the, the room at the mark rules are different upwind than downwind because they don't apply to boats in the opposite tack upwind, but they do apply room at the mark. Rule 18 does apply at the lured mark. So we're going to cover that today. All right, let's jump into the weather mark then. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm smoking in on Port Tack here. What, what's my problem? <laughs> well, I think, you know, as far as taking the high road, the, the first problem is that you've got yourself on the ley line, right? If, you know, when I'm trying to take the high road and I want to sail a good clean regatta, I, I'm outside that three boat lane zone because nothing, room of the mark, upwind or downwind doesn't count outside that three boat lane zone. So I do a safe little buffer beyond that because nobody can quite, gauge what three boat lanes is but if i come in at five boat lanes on port still gives me time to go bob and weave a little find a nice lee bow and get in there um so that's if you're the port tacker how you avoid the whole thing in the first place <laughs> but we probably should dive into what really matters in the rules here right yeah let's do it all right so i'm gonna share my screen with the whiteboard and uh make my little make my little mark and so this is your mark, but, you know, I'll make a, you know, of course the wind's coming down the board here. And um, so that's that, right? So make that the three bell lane zone. And if I'm coming in on port inside this, I'll make the red boat. You know, this is kind of my path, right? And if I'm outside the zone, it's really just a port starboard and tacking too close. and it's the same, it's no different than if we were in the middle of the race course somewhere. And that's why I'm really, as a port tacker, I'm always trying to be outside this zone. If I'm in the middle of this course, port starboard, there's zero difference. You know, here comes a starboard tacker, right? And absolutely zero difference than if I'm in, if, if I'm right outside the zone here. Same things apply. So as long as I complete my tack, don't foul, you know, the starboard tacker. If I'm on port, I'm in good shape. Now the trick comes once you're inside the zone. Now rule 18 is room at the mark. 
And the very first thing it says is it doesn't apply at a start finish line. But the second thing it says is 18 one a first one a is it does not apply on boats of opposite tax on a B to inward. So rule 18 has nothing to do with mark room at this point. Now, there's a couple nuances that put all kinds of pressure on the port boat. And so once they tack, not only do they have to tack and clear their tack, cleanly tack like they do in the open course, and that's just tacking too close stuff. Your port tack, you have no rights while you're tacking. And then once you acquire right away, rule 15, you have to give the, the boat that you just tacked next to the bowed, you know, room to keep clear. And they don't have to anticipate that you're tacking there. They, they, have to, they can wait until you're on your tack. So in the open course, there's plenty of, of things against the port tacker here, right? There, if anything goes wrong here, the port tag is out of there, right? Pretty much. So that doubles down once you're in the zone. Once you're in the zone, rule 18 is also expanded. Now you are on the same tack, so room does apply. But if you tacked in this circle, you also can't make this boat go above close hold. And if you, if I, if this, if the starboard boat, if I, if I'm the port boat and I tack in here, and let's make another little arrow here. And I do tack in there and the starboard boat chooses to go to leeward of me, I then have to let them in. So if I make them go above close hauled any time in the zone after I tack or to leeward of them and they can't make it in there, you know, once again, port is out of there. Couple things you can do as the port tacker. You know, maybe I'm really close and I can, um, you know, and I can make it in there. I can, you know, just cross this boat. Well, that's worth it. So you can mitigate the damage if you can cross. If I'm the starboard tacker and this guy is committed, and I'll, sometimes I'll just say cross, cross, because the last thing I want him to do is tack in there. I'll wave my rights a little bit to keep myself from getting screwed. But the key here is rule 18 does not apply when they're on port and starboard. Doesn't matter how close to the mark they are. So one, uh, let, let me sort of a 2.0 the scenario, and, and this happens a lot, right? Especially once you get towards the middle of a big fleet where, you know, the, the starboard ley line keeps getting further and further out, right? And you've got boats yeah. uh, uh, reach, you know, sheets cracked reaching in. Um, how would you deal with that scenario from, a, from both the port boats perspective and the starboards? Yeah, maybe just draw your, your scenario there. What happens is, you know, if you're if you're out here and this guy's on the ley line, you're like, well, I can't go there. I go a little further. So you tack. And then the next boat says, well, I can't go there. So before you know it, you get this stack up, right? So once you get past this ley line, the subtlety of the rule is if you can complete your tack in this zone, you're, maybe I should expand this out so we can kind of get some detail here. But, you know, if we do this, right? Um, so once you get outside this group of boats, you know, once you get past this ley line issue, this boat is on the ley line. And if you tacked in, you know, let's, let's kind of move this scenario down a little bit. You know, if you're that port boat, you're going to foul this boat. Let's just assume you can complete your tack, right? So that still applies no matter what. But for this guy, you know, suppose you duck this boat, you know, you let them go because they're right on the ley line. Now this one's overstood. So once a boat's overstood, as long as you can complete your tack in time that you don't foul them while you're tacking and acquiring right away, all those things, you can do this. So your point that they start stacking up, there's going to be lanes past that first row. Mm. Where yeah. this, yeah. So where these lanes go away is the kind of the middle of the fleet and a big fleet. They can get awful crowded. 
So you're taking a risk by coming in here that you won't just have to dock the one boat, that they're all kind of stacked up and maybe they're all struggling to make the mark and there is no room to tack in there and make the mark. It may be a, sort of a, a nuanced, I suppose, but you know, let's, um, from both sides, how, how do you prove to a protest committee that the boat was, you know, the starboard boat was overstood? I think there's a couple ways, um, you know, so me being used to this, you know, usually this first layer of boats really is on the ley line, right? So if, if you're the starboard boat and you want to try to prove it, you're like, I barely made the mark. I was barely making the mark anyway. I was not overstood. And I can try to say that because nobody below me made it. And there was a bunch of boats stacked over my shoulder. That paints a pretty compelling picture. Um, if you're the port boat, you can say, if this guy claims that they did have to head up, you can say, well, clearly you're overstood because did the boat below you make it? Mm. And they're like, well, yeah, well, you probably were overstood. Second thing I do is I look at their, you know, their jib, right? And I'll say this out loud, you know, so if their jib looks like this, right? The mains behind them, right? Here's your mast. And then you got your, your starboard telltale, right? And you got your port telltale. I'll actually point out to them that their telltales are flowing. If your telltales are flowing after I tack, right? If I know I have room here and I've tacked here, I'm like, you tacked, I have to go above Coast Salt. And I say, yeah, your telltales are still flowing, right? And I point at them, you know? That's kind of compelling, right? That's and then if I look over and I see that, starboard telltale instead of you know like that it's kind of like you know doing one of those things i'm like uh oh <laughs> i fouled them right impressive that you can see through the jib like that you know of, of some big... a lot of times they have the little window right like like telltales on a jib are set up to be seen from either side because you have to steer to them so dark sails are often you know our j24 sails are made of that Twaron stuff, right? It's black. Can't see through that. So we put windows. We have this little visual window. It's really easy to see. And then, you know, dinghies have the really thin jibs you can see through. So you know, they build sails so you can see those telltales as the driver and the trimmer, and you can also see them from off the boat. But it, it, it's pretty effective. You point out and you're like, your telltales are flowing. If you ever got to a protest room, you could say that. And of course, they could deny it, but. You know, it, it sort of establishes something at least, right? Yes, a visual of some sorts. Yeah, cool. So um, rules aside, how, how would you manage uh, what we might call, you know, this sort of port tech weathermark diplomacy, you know, for, from both, both sides? How to get through yeah. this kind of clean without screwing each other all day long? You know? Well, I think the there's really only one diplomatic way to handle the port tech one. Is you, if you're not taking the high road and kind of making sure you're outside the zone, right? Um, this solves a lot of problems. If you're coming in here, you know, not a lot of diplomacy to be had, right? Um, the only, there's sort of exceptions to that is, you know, you can ask for a favor. Can I cross? You know, and, and maybe they're thinking, you know, if you, if it's even close that you might be able to cross, this guy's thinking, well, maybe they can get away with it. It's going to make it really hard for me to make the mark. And even if they don't, it's still going to be hard for me to make the mark. I don't want them to even try. I'll say starboard tech, I'll say cross. And I might ask if I'm on port, can I cross? You know, do that hand wave. And they're like, go ahead. Cause they don't want me to tack on them. Do it all the time. I, I'm willing to wave my rights there not to get in a situation that could be a flip a coin and who's right and wrong. Just soon have them go by me, tack above me. I still got them at the mark and I've avoided a disaster. Potentially worse, yeah. But I think it, when I get here, if I'm on port, if you know, that's not often that somebody's willing to give up their rights right there. Mm. You know, I'll, I'll, you got it. This is where I think you got to take the high road. Excuse me. <laughs> Bless you. Just duck. Yeah. There might be one more in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the, you know, this is where I bob and weave 
a lot, right? I want to make sure that I, and I try very hard not to foul somebody in the process and find my little lane. So the, I feel like the penalty of, there's some gains by going a little left. I'm not in this stack up. So I've gained something. I'm willing to lose something at the end because the overall gain still is worth it for some, for whatever reason, or I'm on the left anyway, it's my penalty. For yeah, a couple ducks are better than, ahead. yeah, What's a couple that? ducks are better, a couple ducks are better than a DSQ. Yeah. And, or, you know, making your fellow, even if they're not willing to protest you, that's a lot of our culture these days, mm-hmm. you know, you're not making friends out there. You know, you're not going to be, they're not going to be having a beer with you, you know? It's, it's not cool. I think it, taking the high road is the cool thing to do here. It's the right thing to do. Okay, cool. So to summarize that real quick, we basically, I mean, set yourself up uh, for a ley line, you know, uh, low of the, of the zone is probably the first thing to just keep it all safe. And then uh, look for the opportunities across if you have it. And if you don't, then start looking for, a, for an exit rope. Right. And this cross, this, this first boat is surprisingly effective and um and 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 you don't follow people a lot of times because they're all going super slow if they're all stacked up you know you you might very well be able to cross and make i think this is an underutilized one people miss this opportunity to they can't help themselves instead they go right here and they do a quick tack in and you know avoid some of these risky temptations you know, either if you can't, if you're sure you can do a clean tack, do it. If you're not sure, sail through. If you can sail through, and if you can't do that, you got to take the, you know, that's your penalty. And I, and I would, you'd probably second that. If you do get let through to just not slam dunk on top of them and, and give them bad air for the next two lengths, right? Give them a little space to, to get around, right? Absolutely. There's definitely, you know, back to your diplomacy question before, you know, with that comes responsibility. If somebody lets you cross, you want to slam dunk them. You don't want to, you know, you're like, you know, now you're right behind them. You know, even it moves on. There's an etiquette here that's not in the rule book, right? right. And now okay. you're on, you know, you're starting to go downwind, you know, and you just let this guy in, you know, if they immediately sit on your air, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's uncool, right? You're going downwind and you know, and, and, and sometimes I'll remind somebody like, Hey, I just let you cross. And like, Oh yeah. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, come up again. Yeah, like, right. You know, I'll, I'll right, do well, that let's... sometimes. The only reason you're here to, to make my life miserable is because I let you do it. And they're like, Oh, you're right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Get off my breeze. Uh, yeah, you know, none so... of that's in the rule book. Right. But that's, you know, sort of the game we play with our friends and, you know, we want to race hard against each other, but you know, there's this, there is some etiquette with that. It's called sportsmanship. All right, let's take it down to the lure, Mark, because at the top of this, you mentioned that. Actually, uh, before we do that, I'm going to put one more wrinkle in the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, so because, another fun wrinkle be to, like, add a few more boats in there. and. Um, well, it's it's a little different than – let's just not even talk about a few other boats. Yeah. Let's talk about – there's a scenario here where <clears> – <throat> this is a very interesting one. So – Remember I said that rule 18, 1A says does, it doesn't, rule 18 doesn't apply on opposite tax on a beat to windward, right? So right now, red has room. Suppose you're overstood a little bit and you're coming in. Mm-hmm. They do have room. So even though you're on port, you can't be like, you have no rights, you're on port. You are on the same tack. So you have to let this person in. Let's just assume nobody's coming on the um, start of the light line, right? So let's just say it's the two boats, but this brings up a couple of very interesting situations. So that's really straightforward. You have to let red in, they have room. But the other interesting situation that's I think misunderstood, I wouldn't say often used, but misunderstood is I can't, you know, the sense rule 18 doesn't apply right now. Suppose I can almost cross this guy, but I'm close. I can't just tack right here if in tacking I foul them, right? Like I don't have rights till I've on my close old cards on starboard and given them room to keep clear. So if I'm too close here, 
I can't, it's just tacking too close. That's it. I can't just, I have to let them in and I can't tack too close. But if I'm a little further away, I can tack. And as long as I ta complete my tack on time, now it's just port starboard and, and it doesn't apply at the weather mark, right? Boom doesn't apply at the weather mark. So now it becomes a port starboard. So it went from, yes, they have room to now rule 18 doesn't apply. And then all the other things apply. Can I cross? Can I, if I tack, if the red tacks in there, can they, do I have to go above close hall? It becomes the same situation as if we had done it from way out here, as long as that tack, we're in the three ball lane zone. So tactically what I do is if I'm this green boat, I'll actually reach away a little bit get myself some space. And then we play this little chess game where if the boat below me reaches and I'm the red boat here, I'll reach off with them. Sure. So they can't, I'll be like, don't tack too close. Don't tack too close. So it's a little game we play, but it's also a misunderstood rule because everything changes as soon as you tack. So the good defense play, like you, like you'd say, is to, to just match the angle here as you're going into the mark. Um, with the boat to lure it and, and you guys are both on right. Yeah. And as far as our rules discussion, I think people don't often don't understand this rule. Like, yes, red has room. Okay. Now that I've tacked to starboard, red doesn't have room anymore. It does it doesn't continue because it doesn't apply mm. anymore. So okay. that's the, that's the complicated one, right? Yeah, these rules things could go on for days, right? This is why Dave Perry does. They could. Like, so we'll, we'll, that's an important <laughs> one because it, it's super related because the same scenario, you, you've created the same scenario by tacking to starboard that we just talked about. So uh, I, I promise we wouldn't bring other boats, but it is super as common. When we put the arrows back there is, is that hey, you've got the two poor tackers there and lo and behold, here comes the starboard tacker. Um, okay, so let's on get line. Yeah. Yeah, so we got a this bunch of contactors, yeah. right? Okay, we can do that. Yeah, so we got a pile of port tackers, right? Coming in. That's pretty ugly. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think you were just telling me this just happened, right? You did an <laughs> event where you had to go left. Left mm -hmm. was so favored. So everybody was coming in a port, and there's always that one guy. They had a bad start, so they had to peel off, and now they're the, the spoiler, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So this becomes, you know, the starboard is very powerful here because these, they're all in port. When they're tacking, they have no rights. When they have to establish them starboard, and then once they're in the zone there, same thing we just talked about. They can't make you go above close hauled, and if you get inside, they have to let you in. But now you can be an obstruction. So this is no different as far as me. This boat can call for room to tack on this boat. It doesn't mean they also don't foul me, but they have that right. So they also could duck, right? So if they choose to duck, you know, attacking uh, rule. The rules say that the right of way boat gets to to make the call, and so. The lured boat is the right of way. So if I want to tack, I have to say room to tack. This is one of the few mandatory hails in the rule, rule book. And the response, this is one of the few responses in the rule book. Either port tack has to tack right away or they have to say you tack. So I'm allowed to say on the port tack, you tack. And then I know if I'm this tack, this guy, when I tack, you know, it's on them to make sure they don't foul me. And then if I choose to duck, I can't just shut them out. Once I choose to, I have to leave them room to get in there. So those are kind of subtle things going on too. I can't just wipe them off on starboard. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, you know, this doesn't take very long. Yeah. If you're at basically at hull speed, mm. you're going like a bolt length every two seconds. Well, the three ball lane zone is only six seconds. So if you're already halfway in the zone here, you're only three seconds from the mark once you tack, right? <laughs> you don't have much time to say, I got room to tack and, you know, and respond and all that stuff. Like this happens quickly. So if you're going to call that, if you're going to be this port tack boat calling for room to tack, you better start that conversation. You better see it coming and start that conversation way ahead of time. 
Right. And, uh, you know, much like any other, like a land obstruction or, or a real obstruction, um, if you call for ruined attack, are you required to attack or can you go, oh, shit, I'm going to duck instead? Yeah, you can't, you, you don't get to, you don't get to change your mind. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're, uh, you can't say ruined attack and they attack away and you're like, just kidding. I'm Sweet. Gonna yeah, I'm going to duck. This is good. <laughs> Working out later. Yeah. Um, now, the exception to that is if, you know, I think often people don't understand that they have to respond. Mm -hmm. There is a required response, either verbal saying you tack or just tacking. Like you don't have to say anything. If you just tack away, you're fine. If they do neither, then you might have to duck because you don't know that they even heard you or acknowledge or don't know the rule. And if you tack, you're just going to cause damage. So, and that's when you like duck and you, you did change your mind, but because they didn't respond and then you then you, your only recourse is to protest. So you never responded. So, um, the, so the shady treatment, if you were the uh, weathermost boat, would be to pretend that you didn't hear it, knowing that you could force them to, to potentially duck and you've got a nice open lane. Yeah, well, and it's one of those required hails and you better be, you can't be like, hey, I need room to tack, you know. You're like, room to tack, you know, like this is arm signals and, you know, you want to be like, if you ever had to go to the protest room, it says I could not have yelled louder. Mm. You know, they're they're willfully ignorant because I waved my hand and screamed. You know, but you better. And I think in fairness, it's hard to hear. There's a lot going on. Maybe they're talking on the boat. Yeah. So I think you owe it to them to yell out too and make it really clear that you're going to do this. Yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, it really is about sort of, uh, you know, uh, collision avoidance right and you know um if if you're pretty confident they didn't hear you then yeah play the smart and just just duck and keep it clean absolutely just duck it and keep clean that's the bottom line yeah. sail outside the zone if you can and if you do find yourself in there you know make friends right think right. think of how you'd feel if if you fouled that starboard tech boat who probably just sacrificed a lot to be on that crowded ley line yeah. already lost a bunch of boat lanes and now you're making it worse you, you are not making friends if you do this right. and you're putting yourself up for you're doing it wrong you know you're 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 doing something wrong all right well let's take it to the lord mark then things are different down there right there are um so i think there's a, a different kind of violation at the lord mark and i think that is uh, so let's move everything down Oops, I hate when it does that. You know, so here's your leeward mark and here's your circle. Somewhere here's your circle, right? So you're coming in and the first thing to note is just as port starboard makes it so rule 18 doesn't apply at the weather mark on a beat to winter, opposite tags. It absolutely does, a, you know, leeward room at the mark you get room independent of what tack you're on. So you could be the starboard tack boat and the port tack boat says, you know, you have no overlap right here as they enter the zone. And then even if you can get to them, by the time you get to the mark, you don't, you know, as soon as it's established, there's no room, you know, starboard tack or not, you can't go in there. There is one subtlety that makes it valuable to be on starboard. So suppose you're on starboard here, port tack rounding. So you're going to go around like this, right? Um, if you have rights, if you have rules, right, right away rules, you're on starboard versus port, and, and but you don't have room at the mark. So if you're, you know, port tack is ahead of you, but then they try to, at some point, if you establish an overlap here and you're starboard, they can't do a tactical rounding. So it's a real subtle thing, but they can't just go do that wide and tight thing. You know, once, if, if they are in that position, that awkward position where they have room or you don't have room and they can't do this, right? they have to go straight to the mark instead. 
So it's a subtle thing. So it's nice to have rights also. Um, I think that more often happens, you know, like if you, Windward Leward, for example, you know, so maybe you're both on the same tack, both on port, mm -hmm. right? So if you're both on port instead, but you're a lured boat here. So even if this boat didn't have room, they're lured, they still have right of way rights and they can't, this outside boat can't do a tactical route. Good to know. Yep. Yeah. Happens a lot. Um, I think the most common spot for this, and, and I think, you know, as far as, a list of rules that are violated. This is, people don't quite understand that. They take a tactical rounding anyway. Mm. But I think if you're doing a starboard rounding, this often happens, especially if you have an asymmetric boats. Right, so right, right gate, right turn here. Yeah. Right gate, right turn. You know, you're gonna go around like this. And often you're coming, you know, starboard is coming in here and port is coming in here. Port has room, right? But they don't have right away. So they got to go right to the mark and do that bat turn. So I think this is an often misunderstood and, and violated rule because people can't help themselves. They really want to do a tactical rounding around here. That's a hard one to prove tactical rounding versus uh, seeming like rounding, isn't it? You know, sort of in the chaos of spinnakers coming yeah. down and stuff. Happening. And who and what's considered tactical and what's yeah. considered, yeah. you know, and I, I think uh, if it were me rewriting the rules, I would probably get rid of that piece of the rule. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd make it so that you once you have room, you can do whatever you want Yeah, because it's too it's not black and white enough. You can't, how do you know what's tactical? And, and one person's semen like rounding is another's something else, right? Like your skill level makes a big difference. So, and what if you bugger up your shoot douse, you know, and you, you got to be a little late and it takes a little while longer to get around. It turns into a tactical rounding, but not because you meant it to be. Right, right. right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's too ambiguous. I, I just assume that one went away, but. It, because it's there, my only recourse is I remind them if I'm on starboard. You gotta, you know, gotta do a tack, you gotta do a seaman like, can't do a tactical rounding. And usually they're like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what do you mean? I'm just trying to get around the mark. Yeah. What are you I'm just trying to get around the mark? Are you what yelling you at me? Right. Yeah. You know, like it, it, they end up doing a tactical rounding anyway. What are you gonna do? Protest yeah. them for that? <laughs> right, right, right. You know. Um, yeah, the goal is is to know that if they're going to do a one eighty turn, that there's you know chances are they're going to slide the lure at at least a boat length, and you tuck yourself right in there nicely and go. Yeah, and I think by reminding them that they have to do a tactical rounding, I mean uh, not a tactical, a seaman like rounding instead of a tactical rounding, you know maybe they bugger it up a little more, you know maybe they don't do a full tactical rounding, and maybe I can get around here and hold my lane a little bit instead, right? They're here instead and. And that's all you can ask for. Yeah. You know? And the other thing is you are, you're coming ripping in here and they got a bat turn to make. That's a hard turn. So mm -hmm. even if they don't do, you know, let's say they do a real big wide turn, you know, they're probably going to leave you a little space. Yeah. But I think that's a subtle one that I think, you know, and the theme of often misused rules, I think that's a subtle one, but it's not super impactful, right? I think there's another scenario downwind that is super impactful that is often violated. And this goes into the realm of you can't help yourself, right? <laughs> and this is the one where somebody's coming downwind and let's not care who's, we'll put all the starboard, all the green boats will be the ones that are right. <laughs> so this isn't port starboard anymore. Green is good. You know, so you're coming down wind and let, I don't care what tack you're on. What happens is what if this is kind of a, you know, one of those situations where there's a lot of boats and, you know, somehow this group has defined the hierarchy, right? Right. Uh, you know, this guy has room over everybody else. And so fast forward. And what happens is, 
it's really, really crowded. So this boat, let's just sort of make this sort of a bolt length, right? Mm -hmm. So this boat here is now, I can't make the arrow move, um, trying to go around the mark, right? So it, it all of a sudden it starts to stack up, right? So now they're coming in. Now there are all these boats that are lining up. So if, if you're smart, you know, if you're this boat, so, you know, this guy's rounding. So now let's kind of get that scenario where they're starting to really stack up. And this is how it looks because everybody's slowing down and waiting for each other because you don't want to go outside the pinwheel. So now you're doing this. You're kind of all lining up waiting for each other, right? So kind of by definition, when you get three boats there that haven't rounded yet, you're now this boat is at the edge of the circle. So this boat here and anybody else that also said, oh, I'm just going to line up and wait my turn. So they went and they steered all the way over here so that they could make sure, you know, this guy did this, this guy did this, right? And this guy's doing his tactical rounding. Well, now all of a sudden, this boat here is coming ripping in. And there's two things that happen. One is this guy no doesn't, as soon as this guy hits the zone, since this guy is outside the zone, even if he was in it before, he doesn't have room. This person has room over this person. That's the first thing that is often violated is this person has been waiting patiently for these people to go and they don't believe that this boat has room. Mm. And this is pretty short distance. And this is pretty provable because everybody stacks up bow to stern. You're like, there were four boats there. You know, clearly this fifth one was well outside there, right? You know, maybe this a little gray area with this guy, but by the time you get to this guy, it was four boats there. Come on, Jerry. Yeah. You know? So these people don't want to recognize this. They say it's unfair because we've been waiting a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and, and that's sort of fair. Yeah. So what do you do if you're these guys? Well, you kill time a different way. Mm. You stay in here somehow. You luff. You do whatever you have to do not to leave the zone mm. and speak very clearly to this guy. Like, I'm waiting my turn. Do not. You did not have rights, you know. I am in the zone. I am in the zone. So you better just stay in the zone, right? And then bob and weave, whatever you got to do. And then when this guy goes around and this guy goes around, then you can get in line. Yeah. Yeah. Happens a right. lot in the J70. We see it, you know, when these, these 40, 50 boat fleets and then when it gets light and then you get this sort of the wall of no breeze and boats just slow down and stop and <clears throat> the pinwheel just gets bigger and bigger. And then, yeah, then you got a couple of latecomers and yeah. And they come. And the three ball lane zone is pretty short when it yeah. comes to that. If you get five boats in there, they can't be in a line and all be in the zone. Yeah. So that's when this boat has rights. And this, the person that's outside doesn't want to give it because mm -hmm. they feel like they earned that. They got to the zone before them, but then they subsequently left the zone. They gave up their rights. So the yeah. first answer is take your shoot down early stop the boat, do what you got to do, let them all go. It's really hard to do, mm. but that's what you got to do. And then maybe in doing that, somebody will do a really buggered up rounding and you'll get an opportunity to slip in there. I yeah. mean, that's legal. That's fine. As long as they can't get to you. So the second piece though is, so that's when the people go outside and they violate the rule because they're so vested in the fact that they have room. But the other one is this guy coming in. Suppose you did all this stuff, right? You finally got in line and this guy can't help himself. They're like, I have room on all of you, you know, <laughs> come ripping in here. Like I am, boy, that's a huge sacrifice. I have to go. It's kind of like doing that big duck at the weather mark. The high road here is to, if you're not sure, you got to go do the same thing. Right. So the guys behind you don't do it because there's, you know, if there's a stack up here and then you have to slow up, whoever's behind you is going to come at you too. Right. So you're probably not alone. There's probably a bunch of you guys coming and it's going to be the same problem. Mm. Yeah. So the, so the rule of thumb there is if you see yourself driving into a gigantic pinwheel, just slow the boat and wait for your opportunity. 
and communicate heavily with the guys that are going to have trouble also mm-hmm. slowing down yeah. because they just made these tremendous gains and they want to capitalize on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look at, look at me. <laughs> yeah. So those are the two biggest impactful rule violations I see at the Lured Mark is when there's a stack up, the people that go outside think they still have room once they leave the zone and it's shorter than you think. Three bone lanes isn't that far. And the people that come in, even if they don't have room, if all these people have stopped in the zone, they're moving, they have momentum, they may not be able to stop in time or mentally don't want to. And then once they're here and and if they're moving, now they're stuck. Their only way out is to, you know, like jive around, miss the mark and come back in. That's kind of, that'd be pretty awful, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Nuances that, that count, though, right? Well, I think that's the point here is that Rule 18 is not simple, um, but it really is written. All these things make sense, right? Like it's written so it's clear that everybody understands the hierarchy. You know, Rule 18 was expanded for that boat to have a lot, doesn't not to have many rights when they tack in there at the weather mark, right? And the reason they did that was it was too easy to jam it in there and force somebody not to be able to make the mark. So they wanted to make it kinder and friendlier, which they did, which also made it more complicated. Thus is the rule book, right? Well, awesome. Um, well, armed with this, let's go, let's go pile into some, some mark roundings here soon enough. Yeah. 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 Bottom line is, you know, you have to know the rules, but you also have to communicate them when you feel like you have rights because people either A, don't know them or B, can't help themselves in the heat of the moment, but to stick it in there. Either the poor cat guy at the weather mark or this, this guy coming in late into the zone when there's a stack up. Cool. So the bottom line. Be loud, say it once or twice, but then focus on your boat, get yep. around the mark, deal with your pro place flag if you know if you have to, and otherwise then finish the race and get it out of your head. Get out of your head. And you know, when I'm loud, I also I'm looking for eye contact. You know, I'm looking for that quick nod or you know, if they don't respond at all, I'm like, Joe, you know, Dave Reed, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Dave, you know that room. Right here. I'm looking at you. I point at you. And then eventually they're like. You know, I, I at least will know their intention that they're like, you know, hell bent on getting in there. At least I know it and I can start my, my damage control right away. Yeah, go to plan B. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much for, for all this insight. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Dave. Time to go play. All right. All right. <laughs>